Hey, Fire Nation, and welcome back to another live Q&A where I answer your questions live, unprompted, having no idea what's coming my way, and we have a blast today. I go on a seven-minute rant that you are not going to want to miss, a seven-minute rant. So let's get into it after we thank our sponsor. So why do a vast majority of businesses fail within the first five years? If you were to ask me or my friend Billy Jean, we'd both tell you the same thing. It's because they can't figure out how to get more customers. Ditch the fear you have around paid advertising and learn how to finally make it work for you. Billy Jean has a completely free training that will teach you exactly how to use paid ads to get more customers in any niche. Visit watchbillysvideo.com to access his free training today. Watch Billy's Video. Dot com. Hey, what's up? Jesse, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Cool, man. I'm excited you dropped your Skype ID in and I get to answer any question that you might have. But why don't you take a second and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from and then we'll, we'll dive into the question. Totally. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, loving, loving seeing your stuff, but quick intro on me. So right now I'm 17 years old, senior in high school. Um, and I started a podcast a little over a year ago called 20 under twenties, interviewing entrepreneurs and leaders to help educate and inspire the next generation of entrepreneurs. I'd actually love to have you on the show, but I've had Gary Vaynerchuk, Jack Dorsey, a bunch of awesome people on the show. Um, And I also have done some speaking stuff and then recently started a company helping Fortune 500 companies and small to medium sized businesses better connect with our generation. Fire Nation, 17 years old. So if you're using age as an excuse right now, whether you are too old or too young, believe me, now is the time to start. And Jesse, you're definitely uh, setting the world on fire there, brother. So what can I do for you, uh, question and answer wise? Thank you. Um, In terms of questions, I know one big thing you talk about is sort of growing your audience and monetizing a podcast. Um, So I have, like, I've grown my audience up, but what's, like, what's your advice on either getting sponsors or just growing your show in general, like the growth and the monetization side of a podcast? So what are you doing right now on the monetization side, if anything? Literally nothing, but I've grown it to like over 100,000 listeners total, like in terms of downloads and stuff, but nothing on the monetization. So nothing whatsoever. So one thing I would say for sure is really getting to know your core listener at the very base level. And I know that we've had a few podcast questions, Fire Nation, throughout this Q&A, but just remember... What I'm sharing right now with Jesse and, and what you know I've shared in the past as well, this is applicable to what it is you're doing. Just like insert your medium that you're producing or insert the content that you're creating or insert the niche of the industry that you're in and do these things because these are timeless principles. You know, these are principles that work across all mediums and all platforms. So definitely think about that. So Jesse, tell me who you right now think your perfect listener is. Like who's your avatar? It's like a 13 to 20 year old entrepreneurial kid or business related kid. Okay. So that's pretty vague. And that's the first thing that I would really challenge you with is to get down to the nitty gritty of who your perfect listener is, which is singular. And you may have heard me say this before. You may not. I'll go through it real quick. My avatar is Jimmy. He's actually 38 years old. He has a wife and two kids, ages three and five. He has a 25-minute commute to work. He works in a cubicle at a job he doesn't like. And I can go on and on about him, but I won't because I want to have this be focused on you. But you can start to even see, just even with like 15 seconds, how much more detailed and how much more specific and how much more I know my avatar than you do because... I know exactly what his biggest struggle is right now. And with you having such a vague listener range, what you just kind of described to me was what I call a targeted demographic, which is good. You should have that. So keep that. But then you've got to go from there into that one perfect listener so you can get to know who your perfect listener is right now. Like maybe he's 16 years old or she's 18 years old or X or Y or Z. And then you can really start to say, you know what? Every single time I'm making a decision in my business, every single time I'm wondering, 
What should the frequency of my show be? What lead magnet should I create? Um, what sponsor should I bring on for the show? What guest should I bring on topic wise? You're not just saying, oh, well, you know, my, my listeners are 13 to 20 year olds. And yet, you know, like that's not going to really give you the guidance. But when you have that one perfect list, you can say, listen, this is the topic that I need to be talking about. And these are the sponsors that would make sense. This is the lead magnet that absolutely would crush it because I know exactly who my perfect listener is. And so instead of having like this kind of vague, kind of unclear path, you know exactly which fork to take in the road. Is it left? Is it right? And you know, because you know your perfect listener. So let's just pretend that you you have your perfect listener um, and you really have kind of drilled down into who your avatar is, what would you say their biggest struggle in the world is right now? I think that um, a lot of these kids are super entrepreneurial, but they feel like either the school system failed them on going through that or they don't know where to turn to find good quality information from people who have done it. So let's keep diving down because that's very broad and that's very vague. And guess what? That's where you need to start, Jesse. So it's good because that's where you start. But then you need to start cutting down and really start, you know, taking away the different layers to get to really at the core what matters. So you're speaking to your listeners. So from what you just shared, let's dive down. What is a layer below that their biggest struggle? I think it's um, it comes down to like kids that really don't fit in with their crowd um, specific to business. I, I want us to keep it super specific, not go too broad. Um, but I think really, at least for me, sort of like the pro, what I was like, entrepreneurial kid from young age. I had a mentor and my dad's an entrepreneur, but people that don't. People that don't have a mentor to turn to, they don't know where to go next, but they're super interested in business and are trying to become entrepreneurs. Okay, how old is this person? I'd say 16. Okay. 16 years is the date you're going to choose is the year you're going to choose. And fire nation What's important to say is this is not precluding 17 and 18 year olds or 13, 14 and 15 year olds. He's still going to be speaking to them at an incredible level, but now it's just giving him this starting to form this shadow of an idea who this person is. So is this person a male or a female? say it's a guy. Okay. And guess what? Girls are still going to listen and they're 16. Uh, that's yeah. fine. But you're a guy. So maybe you, you relate better with guys. And guess what? Maybe if, you know, I was speaking with a girl, her avatar would be a girl or maybe not. It doesn't have to be, but just to realize you want to go down this path. And so this, now we're talking about a 16 year old boy who is having a hard time fitting in. Like how is he having a hard time fitting in specifically? What is he not fitting in with? Yeah. I think it comes down to a kid that either has ADHD or ADD, like I had some sort of thing that can't helps them not focus in school, but also comes down to a kid that's super dove into business and doesn't really fit in on the following the typical, hey, I'm going to learn and get really good at math or get really good at whatever class it is and think about more long-term stuff. Okay. So now this is really getting exciting. Okay. Now we're talking about ADHD, 16 year old boys that are struggling with ADHD. So now we're really starting to get a little more core. So what is like really the biggest struggle the 16 year old boys with ADHD seem to have? Like what's their biggest struggle? Like they struggle with a lot of things, but what's the biggest? Probably uh, even deeper than fitting in probably insecurity on like not being as involved in the school stuff, um, feeling left out, feeling not involved and not really knowing where to learn about his interests. Cause you learn about math class if you're super into math, but where do you learn about business if you're a 16 year old boy who's into that? So let's give this boy a name right now. What is the name that just comes to mind? And this can change later and be adjusted, but give him a name. Let's name him Tom. Okay, Tom. So now we have a 16-year-old boy who has ADHD, who struggles with fitting in, who definitely has a lot of insecurities, and that's kind of maybe stopping him from being as involved as he wants to be in school and social life, et cetera, et cetera. So now that we really are kind of, we're forming this Tom right here, which, you know, this person's actually coming into focus for me for sure. So I'm sure he's coming into focus for you. Totally. Like, what is one thing that if he could snap his fingers that he would just change immediately? That he could do for himself? Yes. Finding a role model, find a mentor. Got it. So now, this is where you really start to have a message. You can start to share consistently on your podcast and content that you can create specifically for this and lead magnets. So now you can really start saying, listen, 
I am creating this podcast for those people, you know, that have ADHD, that are insecure, that are, you know, struggling with fitting in and are just really looking for a role model. And what's going to happen is you're going to have people now that are just getting shivers because they're listening and they're like, oh my goodness, like that's me. Like I'm not exactly 16, maybe I'm not even a boy or whatever it might be, but like that's me. That's essentially me. And those are going to become your raving fans. And then guess what? There's going to be a whole bunch of people that hear that and are like, huh, you know, that's not me, but you know who that is? That's that's Tom or Sarah or Bob or Joe. And then now they're going to start recommending that those people listen to your show. So now you're going to have people that are out there that may not be your avatar specifically and they hear about your show, but then they're going to be on the recruitment path because they're going to have a friend or somebody who does have ADHD, who is struggling with these things. Um, and Or you're going to have somebody write an article on Forbes or something about this, like, you know, this podcast is about teenage, you know, teenagers struggling with ADHD. And then there's gonna be that teenager that says, pod, that goes to Google and types in podcasts for teenagers about ADHD. And then of course, your, the, that article is coming up. This is gonna be pointing to you because guess what? Now you stand for something. Now you have an actual mission. You have a focus. You have something that you can plant your flag and be proud of and be known for. And you can start having people recommend your show to others because they know what your show stands for. Like when you first responded back to me, nobody came to mind because, you know, because everybody came to mind. It was just too vague. Like how would I know if a 19 year old would like your show? How would I know if a 13 year old would like your show? That's just too completely different human beings. I mean, 13 to, to 17 to 18 to 19, those are just different human beings who like different things. But now that I know that the show is about ADHD, it's about insecurities, it's about fitting in, it's about finding mentors, I have people popping up all over the place who I'm thinking about should be listening to the show because it stands for something now. So let's kind of go back. What's the title of your podcast? 20 Under 20s. Is there any kind of a tagline? Interviewing young entrepreneurs to help educate and inspire the next generation. Okay. So again, not a terrible tagline, but it just gives you that blending in quality of being like all the other shows out there that interview all the entrepreneurs and share all the things. Why not be different? Why not be special and keep your title? That's a great title, but then have something as a tagline below it, you know, along the lines. And this is something that you should work on, hopefully by having conversations with your avatar and just knowing what you know and doing these different things on, you know, 20 under 20, you know, how teenagers deal with ADHD um, and find mentors, you know, like it's, that's not it. Cause it's, that's just, that's not, that's not a great tagline, but it would be something that people would see the tagline. They would say, you know what? I know that this is for me, or I know this is for a or B or C these different people. So now you're really allowing people to understand who it is. And then I would really talk about in your intro and I would change your intro up to say, listen, this is the podcast for those people who are under 20 that are struggling with ADHD and the insecurities that that comes with and the difficulty of fitting in and who are really looking for mentors. This is for you. And then that just becomes your core. That becomes your North star. And everybody needs a North star, Jesse, but few people have one. So as I'm kind of going through this and kind of giving you what I would be doing with your show, if it was mine and if I was you, what are you thinking right now? What are some thoughts going through your mind? I mean, it's great advice. It's, it's interesting how like for my business and for that stuff, I go super deep and build the avatar and do all that, but I just haven't done it for the podcast and I don't know why, but like, it just makes so much sense. You just dive super deep into it. Um, and really getting to who it is, because once I lock that message down and really find the perfect model, then all the other parts just fall into place. They just fall into place, like the lead, like the lead magnets, the call to action at the end where you can say, hey, this is um, the top five ways to find the perfect mentor for you. And then, then that's people going to a lead magnet that is just that. It's the top five ways to find the perfect mentor for them. And then another lead magnet you can rotate in on different episodes, you know, it could be, you know how to fit in even if, you know, um, how to fit in with ADHD or how to feel 
you know, how to not feel insecure with ADHD. Like now you're really able to kind of work in these different calls to action that you know your audience is thinking about and having problems with and struggles with that's going to allow you to reach them on even deeper levels and get that engagement, you know, start building that email list, start building that audience, start building really that connection with people who are going to become your customers, your clients, you know, your, your diehard raving fans. Totally. That's great advice. Jesse, listen, man, I could talk about this stuff all day because it's what I get fired up about. So is there anything, uh, you know, as we kind of wrap up here that you want to ask about or dive into uh, before we say goodbye? No, I mean, you answered it perfectly. Definitely a lot to think about. And I definitely love to have you on the show. So uh, I'll hit you up after we do this, but I appreciate you. Yeah, hit me up on email um, um, or Instagram, you know, one of the two. And we'll definitely get that show scheduled because I'd love to be on. Awesome. Appreciate it. All right. Take care, Jesse. Have a great rest of your week. You too. Bye. Fire Nation, we have a killer question coming our way as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsor. All right, Fire Nation. So I have Billy Jean on the mic for this incredible sponsorship read. And Billy, I think you have a question for me. You've interviewed thousands of entrepreneurs, some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world, most influential entrepreneurs in the world. But on the flip side of that, what's the stat? Like 90 95% of businesses fail within the five, first five years. Yeah. And my question to you is why? What is that one thing that literally 95 out of 100 people are not understanding? Billy, they don't keep generating revenue. They don't keep bringing in customers and clients and they can't keep the lights on, period. It breaks my heart. And the, you know what it is, is I think too many businesses that literally believe that waiting on referrals is a way to run a consistent, predictable and stable business. And it's virtually costing everybody everything. Literally, people take pride in the fact that they don't advertise like, oh, my whole business is organic and referrals. I would never pay for advertisements. And it's the most ignorant and arrogant standpoint that I see people take that's killing them. And so right now we have these tools available in 2018, 19, where Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, you can get in front of your ideal customer for one cent, three cents for a view. And people are afraid to take advantage of those opportunities because they don't understand one thing, how to get an ROI on their ads. There's no shortage of customers. There's just a short of, of businesses who understand how to turn clicks into customers. And that's what I want to teach them, John. Yes. Stop going out of business. There's no reason. Like right now, if the only thing that's stopping you from growing your business is just getting more customers who can actually afford your services that you like working with, then you got to show up to my training. Like I, I literally made a video, John, that outlines exactly how to use paid advertisements to get customers for any business in any niche. I don't care if you do product sales, physical products. I don't care if it's B2B. I don't care if it's B2C. Whatever your excuse is, I'm telling you, you are one solid advertisement away from having predictable sales in your business and being able to truly scale and not fail. I want to watch the video right now. You know what it's called? Watchbillysvideo.com. <laughs> Watchbillysvideo.com. Fire Nation, you heard it from Billy Jean, the genius himself. Watchbillysvideo.com. Wait, John, here's the best part. It's freaking free. And it's free. <laughs> so like, there's nothing. Just literally, I'll send it to you. Like, just I'll text it to you, email it to you, whatever the heck. Just go there and watch the video and just tell me it's not helpful. Love it. Watchbillysvideo.com. Hello, this is Joey. Joey, John Lee Dumas, how are you doing today? John, I'm doing great, man. Better than I deserve. How are you doing? <laughs> you know, I can't complain either, my friends. Where are you coming from and uh, what do you have going on in the world? I am coming from Baltimore, Maryland right now. Uh, I'm at my office uh, getting ready to head up. I just wrapped up a pretty productive day. Cool. Uh, yeah, man. And what do you have going on in your world? Like, what do you do? Like, what's your thing? My thing is HR for small businesses and startups. Uh, and I've got a podcast as well. Uh, but my company is Jumpstart HR. And uh, we help build businesses all across the country and uh, become the HR department for startups that need the expertise. But 
can't afford the full-time person. Cool, man. Well, we've been talking to a lot of podcasters today. I kind of feel like it's actually becoming the norm to have a podcast as opposed to being a person that uh, doesn't have a podcast. So uh, welcome to the club. I hope you've uh, <laughs> been rocking it there for a little bit. And give me this before I let you dive into your question. You run an HR company, you said, right? That's right, yeah. Who would you consider your perfect client? Like, what do you look for? Like, if your phone rang right now and you could just literally decide who that individual or company was, what do they look like? Perfect Client is a small business that's got 20 employees. Uh, The owner is frustrated with HR. Uh, They don't have the capabilities on hand to really do it successfully, but they believe in the power of uh, outsourcing and remote work, um, letting the best person for the job do the job wherever they are, uh, and they're someone committed to growth. Love that. I mean, Fire Nation, that's an example of somebody who really knows what his best clients look like. Because now, guess what? He can go out and find them. He can uh, create content for them. So then people listen and consume that content. They can be like, that's me. Like, that sounds like me. Like, I have 22 people in my company and I'm having some frustrations and some headaches over X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I just heard this podcast from Joey and he was talking about all these problems and how his company solves them and how he solves them for other people. Like, that's perfect. So really knowing that at the core. So for you, Joey, what question do you have for me? Well, John, I follow you everywhere and you're doing an amazing job with content. And I'm struggling with the ability to repurpose great content so that I don't have to reinvent the wheel on YouTube, on my podcast, on Instagram. So what advice would you give to someone that's looking to maximize their time and impact while creating content online? So I think this would be a great repurposing strategy. So let me kind of just burn through it and then you kind of maybe come back, ask some questions on it, ask me to clarify some things, dive deeper in some areas, and then we can just kind of have like a, a cool conversation around it. So what I think was for someone like you who sounds like you really want to create plat- uh, sorry, uh, content on all of these different platforms, which is cool, I would say that this would be a great place to start. I would say, listen, I have a YouTube channel and that's where I'm going to be starting my content creation. So I would be looking at it like, listen, I am going to create a three to five minute video on YouTube. It's going to be high quality video. It's going to be high quality audio as well. And I'm just going to create a great three to five minute video on a very cool topic that has a lot of potential to rank for Google because, you know, Google owns YouTube. So they love to promote YouTube videos as answers to people's specific questions. And by the way, as a consumer, I love when I type in a question in Google and I see a YouTube video that's been done on it because I can just go in there and actually watch some do the thing so they don't have to like read this huge body of text. I can just actually visually watch it. So look at that as maybe where you start. Like I'm going to YouTube, I'm going to create a great three to five minute piece of content um, on a serious problem that my perfect client has. So you know what this uh, perfect client has for issues. You know, you describe them very well at the beginning of the call. I will list out 20 to 30 to 40 of their biggest problems. Um, Very specific, because again, these are only gonna be three to five minute videos. And then I would sit down one day and I would batch them. And what I would do is just record you in a very high quality, again, audio and video, good lighting, good audio, got a lavalier mic, hopefully, so it comes in really good because you're gonna need that for later. Record answers to that to that video. And maybe you just have the, the video playing nonstop. So maybe you just press the play button, record, and then you just sit there for a couple hours just going through the actual questions um, and problems and giving your best kind of answers to it. And then you're taking that huge video clip, then you're gonna send it to a um, video editor. You can find them on like Upwork or Elance or other places. And then they're going to splice in, they're going to splice down, excuse me, all of those into those just three to five minute, nice quick hitter videos, hopefully giving you a nice little intro video clip of like what your business is with some branding and maybe a place people can find you like your website, you know, it's like maybe like a little quick xyz.com, then it's the video three to five minutes, and then it's the outro. So now you have these, um, let's just call them 20 
videos that are three to five minutes that look professionally done. That audio editor is also, on your request, going to have extracted the MP3 audio from those MP4. So they're going to convert the MP4 into MP3. So then they're going to be sending you also uh, 20 MP3s, which you're going to now upload into your podcast. Now, maybe your podcast right now, Joey, is interviews or other things. I don't know. We can maybe talk about this more in a couple minutes. But these can be little um, bite-sized treats. These can be little little bonus episodes. Or maybe you're doing right now a Monday episode once a week. Now, these will just be your Thursday episodes. You're just now adding this great content to your podcast. And on the intros of those, you're saying something like, and hey, by the way, guys, this is actually being repurposed from the video, the my uh, a video that I created this on my YouTube channel. So if you want to actually see this visually, you just go visit my my video channel over here. Go to YouTube and type in you know Joey X Y Z, and it'll get it'll get you over there. So now from just a few hours of sitting down, looking into a camera, and recording basically answers to twenty or thirty of your perfect client's biggest problems. You now have twenty to thirty videos. You're going to be now uploading into YouTube on a weekly basis. Maybe you're going to do it a couple times a week, depending on what schedule you want. You now are going to be taking that that, that audio and you're going to be uploading into your podcast episodes, which is going to give you more content there. You're also going to have this video editor give you a one minute clip, the first one minute of all of these YouTube videos. So maybe the first video is four minutes long, the second one's three, the third one's five, whatever it might be. The first minute you're going to take and you're going to upload that whenever you're uploading all your other stuff into your Instagram. So you have that one minute Instagram clip there every single time with below it that says, hey, the full video can be found on my YouTube channel or on my podcast if you, if you prefer podcasting. And then you can take that one minute video and use an app like Storio. That's St- S-T-O- R-E-O, and Storio just will take that one minute video and it will automatically chop it up into 15 second splices that you can then just upload yourself into your Instagram stories. So then now you're using that video into your Instagram stories and boom, now it's there. And so it's on that platform as well. And then you're going to be taking your three to five minute video that the guy sent you the MP4s of as well. And you're uploading that completely organically. You're not dropping the link from YouTube. Facebook doesn't like that, but you're going to be uploading that organically into Facebook, and that's going to be going on Facebook. And again, you're going to space that out once a week, twice a week, whatever your, your content production schedule ends up being. So now what, what's happened? You sat down for like two or three hours one day, you know, maybe let's say four, four hours if, you know, these, um, if you really do the math, I guess you add up 20, 30 videos at, five, at three to five minutes each, you sat down for three to four hours, you've created these, these 20 to 30 videos that are going to be your entire month's worth of content. And honestly, it, it could be two to three months worth of content. Now you have your video editor doing all of that work with them to, to, that's not causing your bandwidth, your energy. You can have a virtual assistant that's doing the uploading to Facebook, that's doing the uploading to your Instagram, that's doing the uploading to your Instagram stories, that's you know adding it to your um, media host for your podcast. And now all of a sudden, you, after just sitting down for three to four hours, have a month, two months, three months of incredibly high quality content that's going to be consistently put out because that's where a lot of people fail, Joey, is that they create great high quality content, but then they do it once and then they stop and then a month goes by because life happens and then people forget about them. They don't hear about them again. It's the people that show up every single week and even more so a couple times a week. And then again, if you were like me for the first 2000 days of my business every single day with a daily podcast and you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, why is he winning at such a high level? Because he's doing daily V he's showing up every single day and his team's taking that content and repurposing it everywhere. He just had a conference called VoiceCon and he just took his keynote from VoiceCon and I was listening to it today as a podcast episode he just released. That's what it's all about. So I just threw a ton at you, Joey, a ton at you, Fire Nation, Beauty of Podcast. If you want to hit rewind, you can. If you don't, you don't have to, but that's the beauty of it. You can listen to this as many times as you want to. Um, But Joey, with that little rant about all that stuff, what are some thoughts you have? What are some questions you have? immediate thoughts are that this is this is exactly the power of network and following leaders like yourself on social media because what I would have taken maybe nine to 12 months to struggle through you gave me a clear plan in like 10 minutes um, so I, I really value that investment that you you have on my uh, on my podcast and on my content uh, my next question I guess would be is uh, would you I'd love to have you come on the show I'm not <laughs> sure the process but I had to shoot my shot 
Uh, we could talk offline about that. But um, yeah, no, you mentioned the fact that recording multiple, sitting once and recording it over a uh, period of two hours or so, um, do you, what type of content works best in that? Is it evergreen stuff? Is it, is it you, you tell me, what's, what's the best, what's worth The best you? content by far, because again, going back to the beginning where you have made it clear to me that you really do know who your best client is, you know who your perfect customers are, is sitting down and writing out 20 to 30 to 40 of their biggest problems, of their biggest struggles, of their biggest challenges. And then your content is identifying that struggle, that obstacle, that challenge, and then talking for the next 95% of the content about the solution, about what they should be doing. So you're using their words, you're using their vocabulary, and then you're providing the solution to them. And there's a lot of ways to find out what the biggest problems are. I mean, you've been in the industry for a little while, so you know it. I mean, you hear it, you see it when they email you, when you know, you're at conferences, when you, know, you see what people are complaining about, what people are struggling with, what people wish existed that don't. Like those are all different things. But I would also go to like Q&A sites and see like like Quora and LinkedIn answers and see what people are asking questions about in your field, in your niche, uh, things along those lines. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can go to um, Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, all these different groups that are specific to industries and niches. These are public thriving groups. And then just join those groups and see what people are posting about. Like I go into my podcast is Paradise Facebook group and pe- what are people posting? Questions, problems, struggles, challenges, you know, annoyances. Those are all things I can just take that one sentence and just repeat that sentence out loud on a video and then provide the solution. And then that solution in a place like YouTube is evergreen. And oh, by the way, I forgot about this whole other section as well of what you could do, which is uh, food for thought, is why not have one of your virtual assistants transcribe that three to five minute video? Just like, and by the way, YouTube actually will do this as well. You, and it does it pretty clearly. You can have YouTube actually transcribe those videos for you. It'll come out like 90 to 95%. They're probably getting better all the time. Then you can have a VA go in, clean it up to 100%, and then Put that as an article on your blog. Put that in LinkedIn. Um, post that on LinkedIn. Post it on on Facebook. Um, do those different things now. So now you have written content as well. Like that was a whole other section that I was going to get into, but I didn't even that I just remembered. So that's another way that you're creating content. Make that an email. You know that could be an amazing email of the you know the biggest challenge I heard you know today you know was boom. Then your email is that challenge, and then your solution that you just by the way recorded a video about, you know, got to 90% um, of the actual transcription from YouTube who did it for you, then your virtual assistant cleaned it up a little bit, made a blog post worthy or made it just post worthy in general. And then boom, there's another piece of content right there. So that is a long way of saying my, my direct answer to you is you're just sitting down and you're identifying the 20, 50, 100 biggest struggles, challenges, obstacles that your cl- your perfect client has and is currently having and you answer them. All right, man. That sounds like a plan. I'm going to get started on that and I'll shoot the uh, footage uh, your way so you can take a look once it's all <laughs> Please repurposed. Please do. And, yeah, absolutely. And if you get it over to me before this episode goes live, we'll even put it in the show notes. Uh, so Fire Nation, you can go see what Joey is up to doing that kind of stuff. And brother, shoot me an email. I will be on your show. I do have something that I call an absolute yes to whenever people ask me in person at conferences or audibly something like this uh, i just say yes i just say yes so shoot me an email we'll uh my my scheduling team will will hammer out the specifics and we'll make it happen my man i really appreciate you take care joey bye all right bye hey fire nation hope you enjoyed this episode i actually just went back and looked and it was a seven minute rant that i went on there but you know sometimes when i get going i just can't stop i get so passionate about this stuff and i hope that you have something that you are fired up about that you're passionate about fire nation if you don't visit my free training three hours to your big idea if you do still visit the training because it'll give you clarity if you have a ton of ideas you want to narrow down to one visit this training yourbigidea.io. I will see you there, Fire Nation. Peace. 
Fire Nation, what if I told you that you are one solid ad away from having predictable sales in your business and being able to truly scale? You probably ask me how to create that ad. Well, my friend Billy Jean put together a completely free training where he does just that. Learn Billy's proven and repeatable three-step process to generate leads and sales for any product or service. The only thing stopping entrepreneurs from using the same strategy is knowing it exists and learning how the heck to make it work. Visit watchbillysvideo.com to access his free training today. Watchbillysvideo.com.